The year is 1914, a year that at first glance seems like any other. The world is on the cusp of modernity, with technological advancements and cultural shifts shaping societies in unprecedented ways. Europe, a tapestry of empires and alliances, basks in the golden glow of a seemingly peaceful summer. The continent is a mosaic of powerful nations, each with its own ambitions and fears, yet bound together by a complex web of treaties and agreements. From the bustling boulevards of Paris where artists and intellectuals gather in lively debates, to the vibrant cafes of Vienna where the air is filled with the melodies of classical music, life carries an air of optimism, a belief in progress. The cities are alive with the promise of a bright future, where innovation and culture flourish. Yet, beneath this veneer of tranquility, a current of unease stirs. Political tensions simmer as old rivalries and new ambitions clash. The balance of power is delicate, and the slightest misstep could send it tumbling into chaos. Nationalistic fervor grips the hearts of men. The idea of nationhood, of belonging to a greater whole, fuels passions and stokes the fires of conflict. Leaders and citizens alike are swept up in a tide of fervent patriotism, each believing in the righteousness of their cause. The world, unknowingly, teeters on the precipice of a catastrophe that will forever alter the course of human history. The signs are there for those who care to see them, but few can imagine the scale of the disaster that is about to unfold. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, in the distant city of Sarajevo, ignites a diplomatic firestorm. What seems like a localized act of violence quickly spirals out of control, as nations rush to defend their honor and assert their dominance. Austria-Hungary, fueled by grief and anger, issues Serbia a harsh ultimatum. The demands are severe, almost impossible to meet, and designed to provoke a confrontation. The stage is set for a conflict that will engulf the entire continent. Alliances, long dormant, snap into action like a deadly game of dominoes, each nation, bound by treaties and pacts, is drawn into the fray, unable to extricate itself from the commitments made in times of peace. Germany pledges unwavering support to Austria-Hungary, while Russia, bound by treaty to Serbia, mobilizes its vast armies. The machinery of war begins to turn, and the world holds its breath, watching as the great powers of Europe prepare for battle. Within weeks, the intricate web of alliances ensnares all of Europe in a conflict no one could have foreseen. The declarations of war come swiftly, each one a step closer to the abyss. The world watches in disbelief as declarations of war cascade across the continent. What began as a localized dispute explodes into a global conflagration, drawing in nations from every corner of the earth. What began as a localized dispute explodes into a global conflagration. The flames of war spread rapidly, consuming everything in their path. The world is plunged into a conflict of unprecedented scale and ferocity. Millions of young men, caught in the grip of patriotic fervor, answer their nation's calls to arms. They march off to war with dreams of glory and heroism, unaware of the horrors that await them. The reality of war with its mud and blood, its fear and pain, is far removed from the romantic ideals they hold. They march off to war with dreams of glory and heroism, unaware of the horrors that await them. The trenches, the gas, the relentless artillery fire, these are the realities they will soon face. The world they knew, a world on the cusp of modernity, is about to be consumed by the fires of the First World War. The world they knew, a world on the cusp of modernity, is about to be consumed by the fires of the First World War. The conflict will reshape nations, redraw borders, and leave a legacy of loss and sorrow that will echo through the generations. As the first shots are fired, the world stands on the brink of madness, teetering on the edge of an abyss from which there may be no return. The soldiers dig in, creating a vast network of trenches that stretch across the continent. These trenches become their homes, their places of refuge and terror. The battles that rage above and below ground are brutal and unrelenting, with neither side able to gain a decisive advantage. Back home, families wait anxiously for news from the front, Letters from loved ones are treasured, each word a lifeline to a world that seems increasingly distant. The war touches every aspect of life, leaving no one untouched by its shadow. Propaganda fuels the war effort, with posters and speeches urging men to enlist and citizens to support the cause. The messages are clear. This is a fight for survival, for honor, for the future of civilization itself. The war also drives technological advancements as nations seek new ways to gain an edge over their enemies. 
Tanks, airplanes, and chemical weapons make their debut on the battlefield, changing the nature of warfare forever. The aftermath of battles leaves landscapes scarred and desolate. The cost of victory is measured in lives lost and lands devastated. The world is forever changed, its innocence lost in the fires of war. The war finally comes to an end with the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, but the peace is fragile, built on a foundation of resentment and unresolved tensions. The seeds of future conflicts are sown, even as the world tries to rebuild and heal. Memorials and cemeteries stand as silent witnesses to the cost of the war. The fallen are remembered, their sacrifices honored, but the lessons of the past are not easily learned and the world remains on the brink of madness, ever teetering on the edge of chaos. Today Europe stands as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. The scars of the past are still visible, but so too is the determination to build a better future. The brink of madness is never far away, but neither is the hope for peace and progress. To understand the First World War, one must first unravel the intricate web of alliances that entangled Europe in the early 20th century. These alliances were not formed overnight, but were the result of decades of diplomatic maneuvering, political calculations, and mutual suspicions. The leaders of Europe believed that by creating these alliances, they could maintain a balance of power that would deter any one nation from becoming too dominant. However, this delicate balance was more fragile than they realized. These alliances forged in the name of security and stability would ultimately prove to be the very instruments of its demise. The intricate web of treaties and agreements meant that a conflict between two countries could quickly draw in others, turning a small dispute into a full-scale war. The leaders of Europe were playing a dangerous game, one that would have catastrophic consequences. The Triple Alliance, consisting of Germany, Austria-Hungary and Italy, stood in opposition to the Triple Entente, comprised of France, Russia and Great Britain. These two powerful blocs were like two opposing forces, each wary of the other's intentions. The alliances were meant to provide a sense of security, but they also created a rigid structure that left little room for diplomacy or compromise. These alliances, intended as deterrence, created a climate of suspicion and fear, each nation was constantly on edge, worried that any move by their rivals could be the first step towards war. This atmosphere of distrust made it difficult for leaders to communicate openly and honestly, further increasing the chances of misunderstandings and miscalculations. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand on June 28, 1914, provided the spark that ignited this powder keg of tensions. The Archduke was the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne and his murder by a Serbian nationalist was seen as a direct challenge to the Empire's authority. The assassination was not just a tragic event, it was a catalyst that set off a chain reaction of events that would lead to war. Austria-Hungary, determined to crush Serbian nationalism, saw an opportunity to assert its dominance in the Balkans. The region had long been a source of tension, with various ethnic groups vying for independence and influence. Austria-Hungary's leaders believed that by taking a hard line against Serbia, they could send a message to other nationalist movements and secure their empire's future. With the unwavering support of Germany, Austria-Hungary issued Serbia a humiliating ultimatum, one they knew would be difficult to accept. The ultimatum demanded that Serbia take a series of actions that would effectively place it under Austro-Hungarian control. The terms were so harsh that they were almost designed to be rejected, giving Austria-Hungary a pretext for war. Serbia, backed by Russia, attempted to negotiate but to no avail. The Serbian government knew that accepting the ultimatum would mean the end of their independence, but they also understood the risks of defying Austria-Hungary. They turned to Russia, their traditional ally, for support. Russia, seeing itself as the protector of Slavic nations, was willing to stand by Serbia, but this only escalated the situation further. Austria-Hungary, unsatisfied with Serbia's response, declared war on July 28, 1914. This declaration of war set off a chain reaction, as the complex system of alliances began to come into play. What might have been a localized conflict quickly spiraled out of control as other nations were drawn in the fragile peace that had held Europe together for decades shattered. The continent had enjoyed a period of relative stability, but the underlying tensions had never truly gone away. The outbreak of war revealed just how precarious that peace had been, as old rivalries and grievances came to the surface. Russia, honoring its commitment to Serbia, mobilized its troops, 
prompting Germany to declare war on Russia on August 1st. The mobilization of Russian forces was seen as a direct threat by Germany, which had long feared being encircled by hostile powers. Germany's leaders believed that they had to act quickly to protect their interests, leading them to declare war. France, bound by treaty to Russia, followed suit, declaring war on Germany on August 3rd. France had its own reasons for joining the conflict including a desire to avenge its defeat in the Franco-Prussian War and to reclaim lost territories. The alliances meant that once one nation went to war, others were almost compelled to follow. The intricate system of alliances designed to prevent war had instead propelled Europe into the abyss. The very agreements that were meant to keep the peace had created a situation where a conflict between two nations could quickly escalate into a world war. The leaders of Europe had underestimated the power of these alliances to draw them into a conflict that none of them truly wanted. What began as a regional conflict in the Balkans had, within a matter of days, escalated into a global war, drawing in nations from every corner of the globe. The interconnected nature of the alliances meant that countries far removed from the initial conflict were soon involved. Colonies and territories around the world were drawn into the fighting, making this truly a world war. The world watched in horror as the lights of civilization began to dim, extinguished by the encroaching darkness of war. The optimism and progress of the early 20th century were replaced by fear and uncertainty. The war would bring unprecedented destruction and loss, changing the course of history forever. The tangled alliances and ultimatums that had once seemed like a safeguard had instead led to one of the darkest chapters in human history.